section 7.1 radical expressions and radical functions okay this is a radical expression right here and if you have the radical sign um, then underneath it in pink would be the radicand okay a few of these examples real quick as um, we're going to be working with square roots the square root of 36 is 6 because 6 squared equals 36 square root of 0 is 0 because 0 squared equals 0 and then we have this fraction square root of 4 is 2 square root of 49 is 7 so 2 7 and the reason is because these values squared give us that value give us our radicand so and if we look down here the square root of x to the sixth is x to the third because x to the third squared equals x to the sixth so the idea is we want to know what squared equals our radicand okay that's how we solve it a couple of reminders is that square root of zero is zero and that you cannot have a, um, an even index and a negative radicand okay if that's the case you have a no real solution and we'll talk about this more later in section 7.7 .7. we'll find out a little bit more about these values okay number one we're going to start working some of these examples and afterwards I'm going to show you how to put some of these in the calculator but first um, the square root of 100 is 10 because and we'll say because 10 squared equals the radicand okay so our answer was 10 um, number two is going to be 3 fifths because 3 fifths squared is going to equal 9 20 fifths and then number three we're going to have one one hundredths because if I square that I'll get um, the radicand and number four we want to look at it what squared first of all I'm going to ignore the negative sign out front ignore it what squared gives us 36 well we know six times six is 36 so that's six and then the negative is just brought down in front of it so our answer is negative six number five now that we're with variables we still want to know x to what power squared equals x to the 16th but uh, the way we are um, going to work that one is if you divide it by the index there's a known index of uh, um, 2 right there okay so 16 divided by 2 is x to the 8th all right same thing number six uh, what squared gives us 16 4 and then 6 divided by our index, our index is a known 2, so 6 divided by 2 is a 3. So for the variables, we're going to try to um, divide to solve for that. Number 7 is this time our index changed. It's a 3 this time. Okay, so now we want to know what cubed. So basically, we want to know something times something times something equals 64. So 4 is our answer because... 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. Okay. Number 8, if I wanted to separate that, I could rewrite it as the square root of 1 over the square root, of, I mean, not the square root, the cubed root. Um, 1 times 1 times 1 equals my radicand. And, and then in the bottom, 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. So the cubed root of 1 8 is 1 half. Number nine, um, I can have negative here this time because this is an odd index, so it's just going to be negative five. Negative five to the third power equals negative 125. Number 10, since we said we were working with variables, we're going to say um, x, we're going to divide 12 by our index. So what's 12 divided by 3? It's just going to be x to the fourth okay and let me write show you why my answer is x to the fourth but if i wrote that out i would say x to the fourth raised to the third power remember power to a power you multiply and that does give me my radicand so that's why we divide it kind of helps you to see it all right number 11. Uh, let's work with our negative 64 first we're going to say negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is negative 64 
and then with my variables, I'm going to divide 6 divided by 3 is x squared. Okay, we're going to move on to number 12. Okay, now I need to know what multiplied 4 times gives me 16. So, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. My answer is 2, but this negative sign that was out front just sits out front. And we bring it down. Okay, um, what to the fifth power gives me negative 32? Well, that's going to be negative 2. If I multiply that out five times, I will get negative 32. And number 16, if you have an even index, you cannot have a negative radicand. Okay, this is your index. If you have an even index and a negative radicand, it's no real root. Now later we said in, I think it's section 7.7, .7, we'll talk about more specifically what kind of problem this is and how to solve those. But for now, it's safe just to say no real root. All right, number 15. Um, if it's variables, we want to divide by the index. So I'm going to say 20 divided by 5 is going to be x to the fourth. And then the last one, 64. What multiplied 6 times gives me 64? Well, that's going to be a 2. And now divide my x to the 12. So I'm going to say 12 divided by 6 is going to be 2. So it's going to be 2x squared. Okay, real quick before we continue, I showed you how you can put these in the calculator. If you have a regular um, square root problem, if it has a box around it, it means it's a button on the calculator. So this is a button, this is a button. You put this value in, you close the parentheses, and then you put that value in. Um, and then if this uh, if it has an index higher than 2, like number 13, it's an index of 5, and the radicand is negative 32. So these are both ways you can put these um, radicals in the calculator and check the same thing we've been doing in the previous problems. So if you want to do that, you go ahead and write those steps down, and you can use that as a check method. All right, so we continue on with number 17, and it's going to be um, what squared gives me 25, and that's going to be 5, and then for the variables, divide by the index. There's a known 2 there, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm just going to put A, and 20 divided by 2 is a 10. Okay, number 18, negative 27, the cube root of that is negative 3. X, when I say 12, divided by that is going to be X is a fourth. And then Y, 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. And then my last one, number 19, ignore the negative out front. We're going to do it last. I want to do the cube root of 64. It's going to be 4. A, the 3 divided by 3 is just going to give me A to the first power over, now divide 9 divided by 3 is going to be B to the third, and do not forget to bring your negative back in front.